Welcome back. Yeah, thank you. So here I am again. So um, b before we just um, talked about something like very high level, very distant future, not really technical details, more like giving you an overview of what's going on there. And this time we just dig really deep into uh, details and yeah, the PCAP BGP parser is a neat tool we developed at, at DKIX just to solve some of our technical issues in terms of what we need for our data analysis. So this is joint work with Tobias. And um, yeah, we all know IXP maintain route servers and that they're processing a significant amount of data, especially not probably the amount of data, which is crucial here, but th this sort of information is very important for XPs. All the BGP announcements, and um, yeah, if you get requests from customers, um, you, you may w need to debug something. So customers asking for, hey, we, we see weird things going on, we don't see certain prefixes, or why don't don't you accept certain prefixes? So sometimes you just need a debugging because a customer is asking for it. Or you could imagine of an historic analysis. So for instance, my boss is stopping by and saying, hey, we, we got a new peak at the IXP. Is it because of new routes? Or is it because of more traffic for, for some CDNs or whatsoever? And so we need to go and do some data analysis and, and see what's going on, on on the control plane, actually. The internet is not all good. We also have incidents, so probably someone does a um, route hijack or m some misconfiguration, some route leaks, and we want to really get the um, root cause of it and dig into what's going on. So therefore, we need a tool set. And since we at DKIX, such as many other IXPs, we maintain a BERT route server, which is great software and which actually works well and, and, and does a good job, it also comes with uh, some limitation if it comes to data analysis. So actually, there's a very limited uh, long-term export of BGP information, because what I actually want to do is just switch that thing off and have a continuous export of MRT data, for instance, which just never stops, really. So that I can, like, even after weeks, I can go back and look into the data and see what, what happened if someone asks questions. So also, there's no simple filtering before the MRT exports, because sometimes I just want to switch it on um, on demand and just have it for a certain customer, IP, or whatsoever. So this such a feature doesn't exist in BERT. And also, no insights into incoming BGP advertisements. So what we see if we use like, like the, the commands of BERT, we can see which prefixes are there, but we cannot really see what happened before the best path selection. So best path selection happens, and then we just have a few. But sometimes for debugging or for really digging into issues, it's very important that we also know what, what went into the route server. So um, that's why we just said, OK, a very easy idea to overcome that and to really get all the information is just start TCP dump at the um, route server port. And this, since BGP is just a soft, uh, BERT is just a software router, this also works for, for any other setup as well, where it's just a router daemon. And yeah, we just capture all our TCPs. And so since then, we actually have all of the information in place. But the issue is, it's very, very hard and complex to, to dig into it and filter and, and look at certain features. So using Wireshark or the command line version, T-Shark is very complex and cumbersome. The output is really hard to process in, a, in an automated fashion. If you man, manage to uh, get this uh, setup running, then you end up with like, uh, line-based output, which sometimes the field is there and is not there, and like to really automate, it, it's, it's not very nice. And Wireshark does support BGP, in fact, but not really built for BGP. So some fields are missing. You cannot really filter on certain fields and like the way it shows the um, results of BGP communities is a big, bit awkward. So it's, it was really a hassle for us to deal with it. So at some point, we just decided to um, come up with our own solution. And we call it PCAP BGP parser, or the short version is PBGPP. It's implemented in Python 2.7 and uh, runs on 3.x as well. It's open source. You can find it uh, on GitHub. 
It's also there as a um, pip, so you can simply install it, and it's under Apache License 2.0. Just uh, on the bottom of this slide, you see for a, a just in command how it would look, look like with T-Shark in comparison to our implementation. And we try to keep the interface like really straightforward. So just to, quick give you, to quickly give you an overview of the features, as an input, we accept a PCAP from a file uh, from standard in, and we also do live uh, reading from, from the interface, actually. So, and the output after processing, filtering, whatever you want to get out of the um, PCAP with, which contains BGP uh, messages, is a human readable format, which, because sometimes you need to explore things and just want to um, see yourself and, and, and get your eyes hands on what's going on. Sometimes you want to have it in a JSON because you want to process it later, or you want to have it line based because it, it just goes into the next uh, script or whatsoever. So um, we try to ke keep the tool um, as easy, extendable as possible. It's um, object-oriented code, and it's very modular, and we added a lot of comments to the code so that it's not just uh, like in some software projects which are theoretically um, open source. I mean, they are open source, but we really uh, try to build it that way that it is easy to extend it and to understand what, what we did and why we did it. Um, below on this slide, we see just the, the process. We have uh, like the binary PCAP format containing the BGP messages, uh, get it through the BGP parser, and then have it in um, output file. So filtering and performance. The filtering happens actually in two steps. First of all, we filter on layer two and layer three information, like uh, MAC and IP addresses, and if we don't need, or if actually the filter is defined to not look into or to just look for certain IP addresses, I can discard all the others and don't need to pass those uh, BGP messages, which saves a lot of time and increases the performance of our tool. Um, there are some advanced filtering features, so you can really basically filter on each field of BGP. Whether it's next top IP address or some communities, you just want to see update messages or whatsoever. And um, you can combine actually each of, of those fields in, in any desired manner. So there you can combine it with a logical and, with a logical or. Uh, there's a logical not, like a negative filtering. Don't look for this IP address, for instance. So um, it's really quite flexible, and um, the names of the fields are really, really easy. So we also did an evaluation, correctness and performance. Like the performance evaluation with different settings, which is uh, shown in this plot, it's, we did from a couple hundred thousand to up to one uh, million packets in the, or messages in the, in the um, PCAP file, and we see that it's a linear growth of, of runtime. We see if we have uh, an IP filter, the red line, then the performance is much better because a lot of packets are discarded and we just look at the subset. And if we have like the default running, like without other parameters, it's probably uh, basically just parsing the stuff and um, writing it in a file in a, a more sorted way. So then we have uh, the, the blue line, and it's just slightly slower if we use um, extensive filters on, B um, on BGP level. So what we also did to evaluate the correctness is we um, had it run with a several hours of route server dumps from, from DKIX, and so that we could assure that it doesn't crash or that it can really handle all the information. So that worked out fine. And what we also did, we compared the output. So we had to do one, one more T-Shark job to really compare our tool to the output of T-Shark and re really that we didn't uh, miss some packets, uh, some, some BGP messages or some fields of the BGP messages. So uh, very quick um, demonstration. So the task was actually very easy. Um, we just want to know the distribution of BGP hold timers at the IXP, and um, the output would be a list of integer values separated by line breaks, just to see, hey, what's actually the um, BGP hold timer at DKIX? So, and therefore we processed this a couple of days. The command is, is there, 
which is fairly easy, just the field hold timer, and then we just want to put it into a file. So here's the plot that comes out of it, and it's with our tool, it's really a simple task by now. I can just take the data, throw it into the parser, add a few um, filtering rules or like things I want to look for, in this case the hold timers, and then it writes it into a file. I just use uh, some mat matplotlib or some R code, which is super easy, and I can plot here the typical hold timers of customers at DKIX. So, um, yeah, I'm happy that you all uh, could learn what we did with PBGPP, and I hope that you're interested and go to, to the website, go to, pit, uh, go to GitHub, or use pip to just install it and, and play around with it. We're happy to take any feedback. We are happy to take any contribution. Thank you.